Mike hey, so, uh, you know, when, uh, when we started thinking about this uh, a couple of years ago and uh, bringing this uh, uh, event together, uh, we wanted somebody who symbolized our city in a way that nobody else could. And, um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about Armando, how that happened. So we approached Armando, and I think this is representative of what he really is and why he's really successful, because he dove in and understood what this meant, right? Just put it into perspective. Just kind of, I hate reading papers, as all of you know, but just think about this, uh, uh, this couple of statistics. Uh, he gets uh, uh, 5.4 billion times his videos have been viewed. 5.4 billion times. Timber, the song that you were just listening to, was number one in 15 countries, number in the top 10 in 55 countries. I mean, uh, how amazing is this? Uh, Amando has 50 million Facebook uh, friends. He's got 16 million Twitter followings. Uh, I mean, I ju just go on and on. One of the most interesting things about him, he made uh, People's Magazine Sexy Man of uh, 2013. <laughs> so, I mean, you can tell why, right? Look at that face. <laughs> Anyways, look, uh, today what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, he needs no introduction. Uh, and I'm just telling you, I'm bursting with pride because he just showed us how much he loves this community and how much he loves us to take that time out of his schedule like from the very beginning. So what I wanted to do today is just kind of have a kind of informal conversation with Armando, uh, who, who I've gotten to know quite well, and uh, just kind of for him to talk to us, uh, starting really with uh, his upbringing in Miami, you know, the rap battle, some of the things you told me, Armando. Well, first of all, it's definitely a pleasure to be here today. Uh, I want to say thank you to the Medina team, Emerge, we're here building history, and, and as you know, <laughs> thank you guys for letting me be, be a part. It's, it's, it's definitely a true honor. As far as um, all the statistics that he was speaking about, you know, gracias a Dios, trabajando duro, working hard, and just doing things that, that I've been taught and, and raised my whole life. I'm a homegrown Miami, Dade County, 305, Magic City, the bottom Miami representative. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm very proud of what our city has done in such, um, I would say, short period of time. Eh, mi mamá siempre decía que Miami es la quinceañera. Es una mujercita, pero she's going to grow up quick. And she was right. She was right. So with that said, um, you have New York, the Big Apple. Miami, the Pineapple. And uh, <laughs> I'm very, very proud to be from here. I'm very proud of our roots. And anywhere I go, I make sure that Dade County is well represented. So to be a part of this and, and, and to see it grow and to be a part of it, and I would say from the bottom up, I always tell people, you know, I'm from the bottom, they can keep the top. I'm very proud of where we are. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we emerge, we from the bottom, and you know, they can keep the top, but we're definitely gonna make a dent. They're gonna, I would say, uh, have to respect. Um, so tell thank you once again for having country. me. Country. Tell us about those rap battles. Tell us how you got started, Armando. Well, growing up in Miami, I grew up in good neighborhoods, bad neighborhoods, and the worst neighborhoods. So it gave me a chance to, I would say, have a different perspective on life. I grew up around so many di different atmospheres. Ironically, the worst things that I've seen in Miami were in the good neighborhoods. Eh, it's crazy. So when it came to the alphabet, whether it was the DEA, ATF, FBI, SWAT, that was all the good neighborhoods. And uh, with, with that, it gave me a chance to listen to music different. It gave me a chance to adapt to any environment. And it also gave me a chance to, I would say, understand the world for what it, what it, what it gives us. I would say when it came to the music, that's where the rap battling came in. I got a chance from a, a teacher of mine, Hope Martinez, with one of the high schools that I went to. I went to Coral Park uh, Senior. I did South Miami, I did South Ridge, I did Coral Gables. I was on tour in high school already. <laughs> <laughs> and let's not talk about middle schools or elementaries. Pero con eso dicho, eh, she believed in me. And Hope Martinez, one time I was battling in the schools and I would attract about 150 kids a day. And she always thought that it was a fight going on. Well, she thought it was a fight going on. And when she broke through it, she seen that we were rapping. And she said, do you do this every day? I said, yeah. She said, you have talent. I'm like, man, whatever, you know. <laughs> I didn't care about that at the time, to be honest with you. So she gave me an invitation to a video shoot, 1998, right up the block, actually, at a, at a club called Salvation. And there was an artist called DMX doing a video shoot. And his... Um, his protege coming up, and my, he was a big instigator, and he went up to him and said, nobody got nothing on this Chico named Pitbull. And he's like, no, nah, you don't want uh, DMX, and brought me Dragon. Battle Dragon, they thought that uh, we were out in, in three rounds. Actually, Swiss Beats was right next to me. He said he'll burn you in three rounds. Went eight rounds, we burned Dragon. 
And right there is when it flipped into the music, because this man named Irv Gotti, big, big producer in the hip-hop business, said, uh, in the music business, he said, do you write music? And I said, no, nah, I don't write, I just freestyle, thinking that I'm cool. He said, yeah, that freestyling shit don't make no money. You better write music. I said, whoa. Clicked on, and ever since then, I haven't looked back. So I want to say thank you to Hope Martinez <laughs> for believing in me, really appreciate it. And Irv Gotti for obviously uh, giving me that insight. And with that said, I've applied everything to our city, because our city was never respected when it came to music, even though we were big parts of history. When you have people like Two Life Crew, maybe their music wasn't accepted, but you have someone like Luther Campbell who fought for the First Amendment that even gave a chance for us to even rap about what we wanted to rap about. So it's kind of like he got stripped of his history. And I said, if I ever want to be something in Miami, I need to come through the king of Miami when it comes to music. So started dealing with Luther Campbell. And one thing that Luke taught me was an independent state of mind. At the time when he was doing records, he was pressing up his own records. He was uh, putting out his own music with no label. And that's why we're here today. You know, that's, that, that's the way I apply the same philosophy. It's doing it independently, starting up, you know, whether it's startups, but definitely starting from the ground up. And, and always going against people that never believed, whether it was music, whether it's the idea, and whatever the future may bring. So, so that's basically in a nutshell what we're doing here today and a, and a little bit of Crash Course 101 on, on Armando Pitbull. <laughs> One of the things that I've gotten to know you, uh, Armando, is uh, work ethic. I mean, always. Because people think that uh, Armando is a fun and party guy, and I tell you, he is a fun and party guy, I can vouch for that, but uh, I can tell you that uh, one of the things that have really impressed me about Armando is because now you, you say to people, Hope Martinez gave you the chance, you got there, tell the kids out there, tell everybody about your work ethic, tell them how hard you, because they have no idea how hard mm -hmm. you work and what you do. Well, you know what they say, you work hard, you play harder, right? <laughs> and for me, it's all about hard work. I'm in a business where it's 90% Business, 10% talent. I wouldn't want the most talented person on my line. I want the hardest worker. I want that, uh, the one that learns, that I would say that doesn't understand the word lose. I never understood the word lose. Only the word learn, not failure, opportunity, no problems, just solutions. And I've been through so much in, in the music business. That's why I relate a lot as far as the stories that I hear on the tech side of things and everybody trying to come out with their idea and what they go against. I mean, you're talking to... <laughs> From Miami at the time when nobody was looking at us, they thought we were a bunch of booty shakers, which we are. <laughs> we know how to party, and when we come to a party, we're the ones that take it over all over the world. Believe me, you've done it. And white, Cuban, blue eyes, in a rap game, que ya sabemos que la jugada ahí es diferente. Okay, no, y hablando español, imagínate tú. So, eh, I go back, man, I go back to the upbringing eh, de todos los dichos, que uno lo usa todos los días, eh, bajo trabaja doble, lo barato sale caro, dime con quien tú andas, le digo quien tú eres, pasos corto, vista larga. I mean, all these things is what I've taken and applied to what it is in the music business. I'm not the best rapper, I don't want to be the best rapper, but God damn it, I'm the hardest worker. You know, out of all them, while they knocking out one record, I'm knocking out seven. While they thinking about performing at award shows, I'm thinking about owning them. Um, it's, it's just a different perspective, and I think that has a lot to do with, you know, my abuela's mentality, que, que estaba en la Sierra Maestra, eh, mi mamá que vino en el Pedro Pan, mi papá que trajo votos en Mariel. A lot of that, eh, I would say that upbringing is what allows me to go out there and, and work real hard. For everybody out there now, living in a society that we have instant gratification, anybody that's a hard worker now is especially, that's, it, it, I would say, is in a great position to take over everything, because everybody wants it. You know, ahora mismo, ahora mismo, y no así. Pasos corto, vista larga, which for those who don't uh, speak Spanish means short steps, long vision. You apply that, I promise you one way or another you're going to be successful. That's great. One, uh, as you know, and as we talked many times, this uh, conference, uh, this event, this movement is about disruption, right? It's how, how, is, how is this new technology disrupting many, many of the industries? We've had over 100 speakers talking about every industry being disrupted, including finance, healthcare, and of course, one of the ones that is being most disrupted is media and entertainment. Correct. You, your meteoric rise over the last uh, few years has been in the middle of that disruption. Can you just give us your view of what's happening in the music industry and how, how do you see that uh, uh, changing? Hey, as far as the music industry, they were way behind the eight ball. I mean, they had a chance to, you know, may he rest in peace, do a deal with Jobs in the late 90s, early 2000s, and, and be a part of the whole iPod movement in the beginning. 
So they, they didn't have that vision. They were thinking they just came from a CD boom, so they thought that they were good. Um, as long as they get their quarterly numbers, they don't really worry about what's coming. Now, obviously, things have changed. Um, I got a chance to grow up through that, through the Napster. I got a chance to be a part of YouTube when it first started, the MySpace when it first started. And now what you, got, what you see going on with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, buying, I mean, mahinga then. It's a band of, uh, I would say, platforms that we're involved with. The reason that when we met, I said music is such a big part of all these major companies. I mean, you could easily take, I would say, 30 to 40% of a company when it comes to music away from it. Because you got people that are sending themselves videos, writing lyrics, um, interpreting the records the way they want to. And obviously, when videos hit out there, that's why I felt that it was so powerful. What I have learned is that no matter what technology you implement, there's nothing like word of mouth. I mean, that right there will we'll be here to the, I would say, to the day we die. And what I mean by that is the way that we've uh, used technology in the platform is that we're not in the pushing field of business. I'm not here to every day tell you, hey, you need to go get this. Hey, you need to go buy my record. Hey, you need to go. No, no. If you give a good product, they're going to look for it. And I apply the philosophy as when we heard records when we were younger, I would say, or when I was young, I would say, I'd hear it on the radio, and I couldn't wait to get to the record store to sing the hook to the guy that was working there. And tell him, hey, you know this song? Uh, I don't really know who sings it, but such and such. It goes like this. He goes, oh, I know what song that is. You need to go to the R&B, hip hop section to go look for it, or the rock and roll section to go look for it. Then you go to the rock and roll section, and it's sold out. Then you got to go to the single section. OK, well, that's the internet for me. I want people to go looking for what we give to them, because it's a great product, I, would, I think. Uh, I stand behind. <laughs> And when you have that kind of, instead of push effect, it's a pool effect, and you let people be fans, that's when you have such amazing platforms. 50 million on Facebook, 16 million on Twitter. You know, you're building the Instagram. You're building, because we build them little by little by not diluting or saturating what everybody else is, I would say majority of them are doing. There is a strategic plan to everything we do on our platforms. And obviously, Emerge is one, one of them. How, how has the uh, power shifted away from the record companies to the artists? Oh, the power has. The power shifted a long time ago. I would say when even uh, when Luke started that, that independent rise. There's been a lot of independent you know, artists that would come out. Me, personally, I was a part of an independent label before called TVT Records, which we won a big lawsuit against them. And that's where I got my freedom in 2009, which I publicly stated my goals already. And what happens now, you're giving an artist so much power to be able to touch so many people. And it gives them leverage when they're going to go cut these deals. Now, obviously, the record labels, they're coming in for deals that what they call 360s. They want a piece of everything that you got going on. An artist, the way that they can touch people now, I mean, look what, um, como se llama el tipo today? The Korean, Sai, Fai, Sai. Oh, yeah, 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 the one guy. You, you see, I mean, <laughs> but what I mean, he had a gang of style. What's the name of the record? Yeah. You want me to dance it for you? I'll dance it for you right now. Uh, hey, back in the day, girl. <laughs> no, but that's Miami called Let Me Ride That Donkey. That's different. <laughs> Look. That's where Sai got that from. But let's look at his movement. His movement was explosive, and, and it came quick and left quicker. So it all depends on how you use these platforms. They can really help, or they can really hurt. And it just goes back to what you're speaking about. If you spec, if you if you stick to GP, meaning general, general principles, which is work hard, build the foundation, you know where you're coming from, so you know where you're going, you know, you stand for some, so you don't fall for anything, and you use that and apply that to these platforms, then you have real fans. You don't have people that just come and go. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm sure he's amazing in Korea, but he had the run, How do you see, so if, <laughs> when you talk to these uh, young kids uh, about the, and in particular as far as the music industry, so what do you see in the future for the music industry itself? I mean, what do you see in the next five or 10 years? Uh, what are the trends that you see? Man, the way the technology is moving at lightning speed, I, I really couldn't even put a prediction on that. Uh, I think that there's a silver lining as far as what music and, and on the business side, what they're looking at, uh, all these technology platforms. And it's a major, I call it the gray area of the international waters, because we really don't know what they're doing or they're not doing, or what they're planning for. Me, personally, what I can tell you is that, look, we can talk all these big numbers, but it's all about moving the needle. What is the call to action? What is it when you have 50 million people? Can you really move 5%? Can you move 10%? Can you move 3% when you really send out, the, I would say, the, um, the right statements, when you want them to move certain places? 
That to me is where the power's at. Those are the kind of things that we're trying to figure out, whether it's the matrix, whatever code or algorithm they got coming up, I have no clue. But we can, call, we can talk all these big numbers, but until there's a real call to action, as far as on the music side, I would say, we see it maybe 1%, but we do strategically find times on when to post things. I mean, there's certain colors that people love me in. So we, we use 66 million people, close to 70 million people as a focus group every day on what we're doing. I go back, there is a strategy behind it. It's not just trying to make it a billboard all day, every day, you know? Let's, let's go back to the 305. I mean, you love Miami, you've told me many times. You're a mega artist worldwide. I mean, you, Thursday you called me, you were in LA, you were, you know, you were the opening number of the iHeart Radio Awards, uh, New York, et cetera. But yet Miami, even though it comes from your roots, it's your business base. Absolutely. How, how do you, when you talk about why Miami as your business base, I know, I know why you live here, but why Miami is your business base versus LA versus New York? Well, I think, I think New York has built an amazing reputation, and we all know that they're the mecca when it comes to business. I just think that Miami is the most industrial thing below the Mason-Dixon. So it's, a part, it's, it's, it's the furthest thing south, but we're far from south, or being that kind of, I would say, uh, mentality, you know? And for me, Miami, the reason that it's, it's such a base in business, fast-growing city, I go back, one of the most international cities around the world. It's a hub and a platform and a sound off for all of Latin America. So everything that's going on down there, I mean, we've built this city to be what it is as far as, I mean, todos los hispanos que están aquí, you know, and we can go down the line. Los cubanos, eh, los colombianos, eh, venezolanos, dominicanos, puertorriqueños, nicaragüenses, I mean, por todos lados, imagínate. Los brasileños. So it, it being a melting pot, it really gives us a perspective that no one else has. And we, it's really helped me in music. It's given me a chance to accept all kind of different ideas and didn't have a, wouldn't have a problem, I would say, opening Pandora's box when it came to music. Same way that I've seen, seen it happen with the, with the music, I see it happen with, with technology and business in Miami, and we all see how fast it's growing. So they have uh, Silicon Valley, Silicon <laughs> Alley, and we're gonna be Silicon Paradise. <laughs> so, but everybody's here. So, so if you're, uh, if you're advised, one of the things that, that we were talking about in this, uh, conference and a lot of the topics is, if you're a young entrepreneur today in Latin America and you want to establish yourself in the U.S., you typically think Silicon Valley, right? You don't think Miami. As a young artist, if you're a young, talented artist uh, to a kid down in Lima or in mm -hmm. Bogota or Medellin or Sao Paulo, I mean, would you tell that kid, come to Miami, you're going to make it in the music business or you're going to tell him, go to L.A. or New York? No, 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 absolutely. I think Miami has definitely built a reputation, it's built a brand, and if you do look at it as far as, you know, I get in all these meetings and it's general market and multicultural and, you know, I, we created a new name, it's called Total Market. Miami is Total Market, okay? We, we are not just trying to, I would say, advertise or market to certain people. Now, would I tell a kid that? Yes, why? If you look on the Latin side of things, we do run it all down here. You have Premio Juventud, Premio Los Nuestros, Latin Grammys, eh, Latin Billboards, and all the, the, the artists on that side, they break through Miami. So they may start in Dominican Republic, they may start Puerto Rico, Cuba, Venezuela, Colombia, and then they break through uh, Miami. I see it happening the same way on the other side, which is, it, it has. I mean, you have some, if you look at artists and break them down in the categories that they're in, you look on the urban side. You have a guy named Rick Ross. Rick Ross runs the urban side. On the international side, it would be uh, Flo Rida. And then you have myself on a global scale. So we're all Miami boys doing it in very, I would say, powerful manners in the music business. And I think that we could do it the same in the technology side. We can interrupt and then tell them, excuse me, but we're here to disrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Get that quote? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a sound bite. <laughs> I like it, I like it a lot. Let's, uh, you know, let's talk uh, about uh, uh, your passion of giving back, right? Absolutely. You, you, you're so involved. Uh, I gotta tell you something. I wish I would have been a, a middle school kid in my school and I would have had a private concert by a given artist <laughs> and my gym one day. I saw that myself and I almost cried. Tell us about what you're doing with the kids. Tell us about SLAM. Tell us about uh, your passion for, for Man, making sure these kids are hooked let up. Let me tell you, well, for one, I want to say thank you to, to Fernando Soloeta and his whole team and Academica for giving us the opportunity to be able to even think, imagine, and bring to life a SLAM. SLAM, first of all, starts for sports leadership and management. And when me and Fernando first met, which was about, I'd say, six to seven years ago, but it's about five years that SLAM's been in the making. I said, man, we need to make 
education sexy and cool, like kids want they, they, they want to learn. And, uh, when we came up with SLAM, obviously the kids love sports, but it wasn't about being an athlete or a superstar, or, or a superstar athlete. It was about still loving, uh, still doing what you love along what comes around being an athlete, whether it's an agent, whether it's a therapist, whether it's a, a broadcaster. Look, I say, that's what SLAM's about. But the most important part of SLAM for me was we got to put it in Little Havana. I'm, one of the, the, the neighborhoods I lived in was La Pequeña Havana. Me crié en La Cinco y La Cinco, you know? And to be able to put this in La Seis y La Doce, means the world to me because you see these kids and you see you. you uh, I know them, I relate to them, and I guarantee you I can tell you a lot of their stories without even knowing them. I can see them and, and feel their passion, their creativeness, just someone has to unlock it. It's almost like what Hope Martinez did to me. So my mother always taught me, she said, no one's stupid, it's just they have to find a way that they learn things. Different people learn different, some are hands on, some read and comprehend better than others, some uh, watch and observe and absorb. So I always thought about that when, when we were talking about SLAM. So to be able to see these kids, they earn that concert, they earn that building, they earn the right to make history here in Miami, and being the first slam ever in history in La Baguena Havana, and which we're going for Slam Junior, and every city wants one in their, uh, in their state now. And to me, I told uh, Fernando, I said, before we step on the gas and we really go out there and, and do this all around the country, we need to get these test scores back para que ellos vean que no es propaganda, no es una muela, y estamos aquí para cambiar la vida de estos chamacos, ¿verdad? Because that's our future, and that's how we change everything. Yeah, you know, that's... Absolutely. Right, that's it. So let's... Uh, you know, um, earlier today, one of the judges of our uh, startup competition uh, and, uh, was Jamal Mashburn. The, oh, Jamal, yeah, he used yeah, to play Jamal, ball. Yeah, yeah. Jamal is a great guy. And one of the things that I was talking to him about that I'm, I so much admire him because... The Monster Mash. Yeah, That's Monster the Monster Mash. Mash. Yeah. So he, he, trans, he transformed a, a very successful sports career into an incredibly successful business career now. Jamal is actually, you know, from the point of view of finances, he's done extremely well. And, I'm very and I was talking to him about that. That's and one of the things that I've talked to you about is you building your business empire. So mm -hmm. now I get up in the morning, right, and uh, when I want to shave and I put cologne, it's my pit cologne that I put on. Uh, you know, and when, I, uh, when, I go, when I get home and I'm going to you know, drink my martini, it's volley vodka. Yeah. You know, so, uh, and then when I'm going to relax and read my Playboy magazine, I, got, <laughs> I, see, your, I see your face on the, you know, et cetera. So uh, tell us a little bit about building the pit empire, right? Yeah. And leveraging this incredible career. So. Mira, for one, gracias a Dios, and it goes back to just working hard, no? Uh, I go back to the goals. 09, freedom. 10, invasion. 11, build the empire. 12, grow wealth. 13, put the puzzle together. 14, buckle up. 15, make history. 16, disruption. I see these goals. I already see them, actually. And, and where I'm going with it is that I looked at everything around us, and what these major companies do is they use us in order to move their numbers, to move the needle on their business, their products. And I, all I said was, hey, if we're doing all the heavy lifting, we want in. So why don't we make this organic and not, let's not put something in front of people that's not real, I would say. So what I did is that I did deals with marquee brands in order to become a marquee brand. So when we did a deal with Bud Light, no, I don't drink Bud Light, but I did want their numbers and figure out how we move the needle on what they did so we can use those numbers on any startup or the businesses we were going to get involved with. Same with Dr. Pepper, same with Kodak. And that's where I would get these, oh, uh, this is a general market budget. I'm sorry, no, this is a multicultural budget. I said, all right, that's great, but we need that general market budget. And as we did business, we moved the needle so much, and they got people that they didn't even know how to touch, first of all, because todo el mundo quiere entrar en el mundo latino. Okay, and one thing that I would hear, no, like that, and, and one thing I would hear is, how do we infiltrate your culture? I said, well, first of all, you ain't gonna infiltrate anything. <laughs> if, if that was the case, I would have brought an AK-47 to this meeting. So, it, it, it caught me off guard, and I said, this is what we're gonna do with these companies. We're gonna move the needle on the multicultural side. We're gonna get that budget. Then we're gonna move the needle on the general market side. We're gonna get that budget. And then in the deal, we have to put that they have to give us all their numbers because they don't like to let those go because obviously that's leverage on whatever renegotiation we was going to do. Well, we did, and that's how we created brands like Voli. I do drink vodka. Me encanta, Boca Huida, Tres Limoncito. I call it the Volito instead of the Mojito. You know, I love cologne, love fashion, wear glasses. So anything that's around my life, 
el Playboy, imagínate. <risa> Viviendo en Miami, uno se puede complicar. <risa> Pero tienes que vivir la vida, como dice Mark Anthony y Celia. So, all I said was, look, anything that's around me, we need to build a business around it. And that's basically where you get these companies that we're dealing with. And, and to any artist that's coming up in the game, I tell them the same. I said, look, you need a piece of anything that you're involved in. You're not going to get it off you know, from the start, from the jump, off rip, that's not gonna happen. But if you do create respect, reputation, and leverage, that's where you start to be able to cut those kind of deals. And people have done it. I mean, uh, Sean Combs did it. He's done an amazing job with the way he gets involved with brands and took it to another level. Uh, Jay-Z's done an amazing job building an empire. And I just feel that if they can build such an amazing empire speaking one language, imagine what we can do speaking two. <laughs> hey, so, uh, so what's next? What, what, what's next for you? What, what else on the business side are you, uh you doing? Well, actually, on the tech side, we got involved with a company that's pretty interesting, and as far as with an, uh, a group that has an amazing rep uh, reputation as far as investing in, in companies, which is called Union Square, and the company's called uh, younow.com. So you guys, look out for that. We're, we're getting to know each other right now and figure out on how to respect both brands on the way up, but I think it's going to be an interesting journey, a learning experience definitely for me, and I think also for everybody on the team at YouNow. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun, because this is our first time really getting involved with a company on the tech side like that. That's other, other than just helping them, but really being involved and being able to call shots with them. So I want to say thank you to Dovi for the opportunity and also to Adi for, for believing in you us. <laughs> you, expect to do more, uh, you expect to do more in the tech side as well as you move on? Oh, we definitely expect to do more on the tech side. That's what we're hearing. Uh, build, I would say making history. With <laughs> Emerge here in, in Miami, the Silicon Paradise, <laughs> pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just learning, man. I always talk to Manny and I, I ask him about things. I say, how do you look at things? And he had a great philosophy the other day. He told me, look, a lot of things that are out there, um, they may look sexy. A house can be a very beautiful house, but it needs its plumbing. It needs the pipe work. That's the kind of business that we're involved in on the tech side. And it rang a bell for me in Mahina de Ahora estoy sueño. Sueño plumbing, piping, como vamos a esto, okay. Y eso, so, um, y eso que mi, mi abuelo used to build efficiencies, yes, so I know a lot about, so plumbing, know about the plumbing side. Can buy cancer so, so. so listen, so, lastly, what do you want to tell everybody about Emerge and next year and, you know, the... Man, for one, thank you guys so much for coming out and, and showing support. It's, we're really making history down here in Miami, believe it or not, okay? I, um, I want to say thank you to Emerge, thank you to Medina's team, Manny, thank you for believing in, uh, in me and everything that we got going on. And more than anything, guys, this is something that we're going to be, I would say, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, and that's what Emerge is about. So you're going to catch this year in, year out, and get ready for this thing to grow bigger, and, and hopefully the group that came out this year, one way or another, we can say, these were the first Emergers. <laughs> 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 Give it I up for defending. Mr. Worldwide, Mr. 305. Hey, to everybody here, without Miami, I couldn't have done it. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Oye, y Latino, pa'lante, pa'rriba, que no le guste, ya tu sabes la jugada.